So here's part two of our analysis. We're watching the uh, person in white right here. He's passing the half guard as we begin. Okay, so this point again pulls that bottom leg out, uh, tries to get him to close guard. Pandu Fresh stands up right away, which I like. Let's see, he gets his leg back over. Yeah, I would go deeper in on this cross face. You want to go in as deep with your cross faces until your bicep makes contact with the side of their head. At that point, if it's ski, you latch onto the material with your hand. And in this position, I always like to drop to my left hip. Okay, he's pushing away, so he's making space for his bottom knee to come in. I think you're up on, yeah, you're up on your right foot, which I don't understand. Unless you're trying to cut through with that leg, I, I don't know why you want that foot up there. Look, he brings you over. You recover back to your feet, which is nice, and he goes for the takedown. And so here it looks like the ref gave him points. This is probably... I mean, I, I could see someone like scoring it either way. Arguably, like this is his sweep. And if you consider the double leg attempt a continuation of the sweep sequence, uh, then I could see it being a legitimate two points. I think from your own perspective, uh, can you go over here? Like when you're in this kind of position, like sprawl and like whatever you do, don't give up the takedown. It looks like you, you kind of give it to him pretty easily. You just kind of re-accepted guard. Even if you want to be on bottom, uh, sprawl first, then pull guard. Like, if he's here, if you were to, like, sprawl out on him for, like, three seconds or so, and, like, disengage and then pull guard, again, you wouldn't get the, the points called against you. At least with a with a good ref. It looks like he gave it up a little bit easy. Here, when you land in guard, you, you got to get your grips way better than what, what you're doing here. Like, you pull. Okay, sorry, not pull. You get taken down. You're in half guard. Like, this should not be overwrapped around his arm. No no decent person is going to allow you to just, oh, I'm just going to pull my foot out and get closed guard. That'll never happen against a decent opponent. So your arm's got a frame, so you have some distance to work with. Okay. Like, your left arm should be against his neck. Can't tell what your right arm is doing, but it should be following this arm of his so he can't get it around your head. It looks like it's reaching somewhere underneath his legs. But yeah, he, he shouldn't have access to your head like this. Okay, you go under his leg, you invert. Yeah, you're basically doing like the reverse though. He was spin under Kiss of the Dragon, as some people call it. Which is nice. I like the move a lot. And yeah, he just kind of is saying like, I don't know what's going on here. I don't want you to take my back. So I'm just going to fall to my butt. Which some people react that way. Again, you, you'll catch... It, it's hard to really like critique these kind of positions because oftentimes that white belt, the people that you're competing against, like they haven't seen this stuff often. So to them, it's so exotic. That when you do it, like you'll score almost every time. Eventually, it gets like tougher. So things like I was mentioning earlier, but like holding your half guard with proper frames, that's the stuff that's like really, really important. Because without that, you won't be able to even get this far against more experienced guys. All right, so you get on top. Again, when your feet are free, yeah, this was nice. I really like f movement with your rear foot. You get it out from in between. It looks like you're trying to crush him. Yeah, holding me on belly, getting your knee back down. <laughs> yeah, this was good. And again, oh, there, that's that's where you messed up. Like you're from a points perspective, he shouldn't have gotten points because you're not at all in his guard. So okay, whatever. He he turns and he takes you down, sort of. Again, you you can't let. Uh, referees decide this like that ref's going to score it and the ref is wrong but when you're competing you don't want to be playing around with positions where oh if the ref is not as sharp on the rules he could give the other guy points like don't play around with that kind of stuff so from here as he turns in ideally when guys turn into this tightly 
I would want you to circle around his head, do like a side switch to get up on the other side. Now, if he's holding onto your pants at this point, it might be a little bit difficult. So you, you want to get that very sharp. But from a position like this, like sprawl out really, really hard. And then pull guard after, after you completely disengage, after he has no more takedown. Like that should be a really important habit to build. You don't want to be like a person who, when people shoot on you, that your reaction is to pull guard. That shouldn't be the reaction. Like you should still defend shots and then pull guard afterwards uh, when you when you choose to. Okay, so you're here. Uh, you're on bottom again. You got to get frames right away. Your left arm, you need to be framed across the neck. Potentially grabbing the, the collar here. There you go. You kind of have it. I can't tell what your bottom arm is doing. It, it looks like it's still reaching between the legs. I'd much rather have it dealing with this arm here. You may be trying to go under the legs for like a deep half guard, reverse heave or something. I mean, you can't get reverse heave because both his knees are down. But this is not, in my opinion, a good way of getting, trying to get to deep half. You can't just like grind your way through it. You need to create entries. And these entries can't be going through your opponent just having this arm free to do whatever he likes with it. If he wants, he could probably just cross face you here, grab your material, and that arm that's trying to reach between his legs will be completely useless. So, yeah, you need to, you need to be better with your, your near side arm, the right arm in this case. Yeah, so you're kind of going deep half. He's, he's under your leg. Here's a big back step, but you follow with your foot. That was really nice. Yeah, one of the key things that people miss here is they're really focused on like locking down a half guard. All you need to do is just track that leg. Don't let that leg get free. And if you guys notice, as the person on top extends, he's following well above the knee, somewhere like hamstring near the hip. That's the part of the leg that the opponent can't move like really far. If you try to follow up the ankle, the ankle has all this range of motion. But this point of his body doesn't have much range of motion. As long as you can stick your limb to it, he, it's very tough for him to, to just like backstep out of your guard. So you're holding here again. You got to get inside that cross face. Can't let people be cross facing you. You're inverting. Again, the inverting is nice, but you're you're inverting like out of position. You're still going to get through on this guy, but it's, what you're doing is a little bit dangerous. Again, he doesn't really know what's going on, so you're able to get on top. Yeah, this is another situation where you just you pull almost like out of a takedown. you got to fight takedowns. Yeah, like technically, this should have been fine. I, don't, I can't remember how the ref calls it. But because you start on bottom, you shouldn't lose points, but still... That was a nice move. Just get around you, but you catch him with that, that far leg. He spin out of inverted. That was nice. So, so here's another example of how you're... Well, watch that arm of yours, the near side arm. You're like trying to go out to his hip or something. Again, you got to stop that arm from going around your head. That's the key. Don't let guys control your head. Trying to pass. Yeah, the, this arm is out of position. Like you're behind around his head trying to pull his gi away from you. Should be framing on the inside of his neck. Me personally, from this kind of position, when they're down out on their hip, so he's like trying to drop his left hip to the mat, I like my right arm in the crook of his far side elbow. I'll bridge, turn all the way to my knees, and then pull guard off of that. Okay, so you're inside mount, you're holding your knees in tight, so we can't mount. Okay, you bridge, you get, or sorry, you, you shrimp away. Get your knee in and then you invert. So you're trying to go up before his back. Yeah, I mean, this is a good way of escaping. From here, 
I can't tell. He must have a grip on something. Because I can see you're trying to push off the ground with your hands. Yeah, like you want to use your hands to try to get your upper body over top. Yeah, unless you're getting jerseyed with your gi. It's pretty funny. Yeah, so your gi's off your head. I don't think the ref notices it. I'm sorry, let me just back it up a little bit. Yeah, when you're in this, like, inverted position, if you can ever get, like, one of your legs... I mean, I'm sure you probably know the inverted triangle, but if you can ever get one of your legs, like, <clears throat> out from under his arms, and then that leg that's sort of in between his legs, if you sneak it across the side, like, across to there, you can snap on an inverted triangle. One thing, when I'm escaping side control, like, I don't know if this is... <coughs> sorry. Your go-to escape... I definitely wouldn't make it my go-to. Once you get that knee in, looks like you. Yeah, once you get that knee in, just frame off his face. Have that knee in to make distance, and then try to land this foot somewhere on the inside of his body instead of swinging your leg all the way around. That'd be my first go-to. Maybe maybe you felt something that caused you to invert. <coughs> That's a possibility. But, yeah, I wouldn't make it my first first go-to. Okay, so you're still inverted here. And then eventually spin out, which is nice. So you're back in your guard. Ref still doesn't see it. Okay, there you go. They finally stop it. Let me just see this Let's scramble. Boom. Spin back out. Open your knee wide. Yeah, you did a good job. Keep your knees in tight. Follow him where he went. Alright. So they're going to reset you. Boom. You try to get up, you saw on your leg. Bam! He's excited. Yeah, that was a pretty, that was a pretty badass takedown. You, you can tell that. Like, compare yourself here with when you started the match. You're probably a lot more tired here. Like, your hands are, are way up. It depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to pull guard, then like, man, you got to keep your posture super low. Just because otherwise, there's, you're just, there's a chance they could always shoot in on your legs. As long as your posture is really low. It's hard for guys to just shoot in on your legs. Again, this is only if you want to pull guard. Well, I mean, it's good advice in general, but you might want to open yourself up a little bit more if you want to exchange takedowns. Just so you're mo more mobile. Okay, he shoots in. Okay, you do a good job. Try to fight up to your feet. Again, I'm not sure what happened here, but it looks like you're still going for your... Ah, uh, okay, I can't defend the takedown, so I'm going to, like jump guard or maybe you know, you're like okay i don't care what happens i'm just gonna i'm gonna end up on bottom yeah you, you gotta fight takedowns like all the way don't don't concede to just pulling guard okay lifts you up and bam that was really painful i hope you're all right uh yeah takedowns are no joke <laughs> Uh, so, train wrestling. That's, that's the, my biggest piece of advice ever. Alright, so, I hope some of that stuff helped you. I'll see you later.